I'm still kind of not sure about this hair, but we're gonna go with it. <laughs> Hello everyone. So a while ago I decided that I wasn't gonna do any reading wrap-ups because I just didn't feel the need to do it every month and sometimes I had reading months where I'd read like two books because of school and other times I'd have a lot more. And I am gonna make reading wrap-ups but not like monthly like most people do. What I'm gonna do is something that I've seen a few other booktubers do where they just make a wrap-up video when they feel like they have enough uh, books read to like constitute a video. So it might be kind of monthly, it might be like every two months, it just depends on when I feel like I have enough books to talk about. And right now I feel like I do, so let's get to it. In December I reread Six of Crows because I haven't reread a book in a long time and that is like one of my favorite series ever. And rereading it just reminded me how much I love it. Then when January rolled around I got to rereading Crooked Kingdom, which is just great. I don't think I can pick a favorite between the two books in the duology because they're both just really great for separate reasons. There's just so much about the series to love. The characters are great, the plot is very interesting and like intricate and um, I love stuff with like heists and all that which is basically what this is. And having this book take place all over Ketterdam is really cool because you don't get to see it that much in the first book because they spend most of their time at the ice court. Characters are great, it's a great ending to the series. A lot of times last books aren't really great at wrapping up the series and the characters and everything like that. But this one does it really well, like you feel satisfied with the ending, but also like you just, you want more. Anyway, enough raving about Crooked Kingdom, you all know that I love it, I've talked about it before. And yeah, I rated it 5 stars out of Goodreads, to no one's surprise. <laughs> so I got a Chapters gift card, which Chapters is like the big bookstore chain here in Canada. I got a gift card for Christmas for my brother, uh, so I decided I would use it to go and buy myself a book. Walking into the bookstore I had like no idea what I wanted to buy. I haven't been in a bookstore in a while because I haven't like had the money or time. And I wasn't really sure what I felt like reading. I didn't really feel like reading YA, but then I didn't know what good adult books there were or like nonfiction, which is kind of more what I've been into recently. And then I just happened to see this book on one of the stands on display. Um, and when I looked at it, I was like, oh, I remember seeing a booktuber talk about this book and it sounded kind of interesting. So I flipped through it, read the first couple pages and loved it. So I decided to pick it up. That sounded weird. Decided to pick it up, that's what I meant to say. And that is Quiet Girl in a Noisy World, an introvert story by Debbie Tung. This is basically just a collection of comics and it's like a graphic novel kind of thing, basically describing introverts. <laughs> I just found myself every page just going like, yep, that's me, that's so me. So I'd recommend this to introverts who've ever felt like they're weird or different because they're so introverted and like just like being alone so much because it's not that weird. And this entire book is just like such a comfort to read, honestly. And at some point in it, she takes like the MBTI test and she ends up being an INFJ, which is apparently like 1% of the population, like very rare. And that's also what I am. So like no wonder I relate to her so much. We basically have the same brain. This is just such a good book. I love it. The art is really beautiful. It's just simple and cute and lovely. I also rated this one five stars on Goodreads. Like I said, I've been really into like nonfiction recently, especially memoirs. I've been wanting to read one of Carrie Fisher's books for forever, so I finally picked up the first one that she wrote, which is Wishful Drinking. Now this book is, I think, like a written version or at least based off of her stage show of the same name. It's really interesting just to read about her story and like her life growing up and what, what it's like to be the daughter of two really famous people in Hollywood and how that can kind of affect you. One point that she really hits on in the book that kind of like hit home for me was that she said that she always had this need to feel comfortable and that if you have the need to feel comfortable, first of all, you have the makings of like a drug or alcohol addict, which makes sense because those things are what make you feel comfortable in uncomfortable situations and just make you feel better in general. But she had to learn to be able to experience what she calls a quota of discomfort um, because you can't just be comfortable all the time. And that really hit home for me. Being happy is like my number one priority in life. Like I don't want to do anything if it doesn't make me happy or if I feel uncomfortable with it, which just isn't the way you can totally live your life. I mean, it's important, but it's not realistic. So that's just a good thing to keep in mind that like to be uncomfortable is human and if you can't experience and deal with discomfort in your life and doing uncomfortable things or things that you don't like you're not gonna last very long. But I mean that's not exactly that's not like the entirety of the book that was just like one chapter that she touched on. She talks about like mental health and stuff as well in here. In short I liked it and I want to read the rest of her books that she's written as well. My official rating on Goodreads was 3.5 stars. Uh yeah. And here is where all the things that I had to read for school start. <laughs> so the first one I got through was a Shakespeare play that I had to read for my Shakespeare course. And it was in this giant anthology that I had that has like a ton of Shakespeare stuff in it, which is like the best purchase that I probably made for school so far. This is one I'm going to be keeping. <laughs> anyway, the play was Measure for Measure, which is one of his comedies. It's a darker comedy. It's not like the kind of festive comedy you're used to with like Midsummer Night's Dream or uh, I don't know, Twelfth Night. I'll be honest, it wasn't my favorite Shakespeare play. I found it kind of boring. To me it feels like not a lot happens because I think everything kind of takes place over the course of like one day, but it's not like an exciting day. <laughs> I don't know, it was fine. I didn't hate reading it. Um, it wasn't probably my least favorite Shakespeare thing that I've ever read, but it wasn't my favorite. <laughs> I rated it 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads just because 
I felt basically pretty ambivalent on it. The next book is one that I read for my conflict in Canadian literature course, and that is Barbara Gowdy's The White Bone. This is basically a book written from the perspective of elephants and how they deal with their day-to-day -day life and poachers. Basically, this book is really cool. I really liked it. First of all, Barbara Gowdy is a Canadian author, which uh, makes me happy because I want to read more Canadian authors this year. I mean, obviously, can a human really tell the story from an elephant's perspective accurately? We don't know because we don't know what elephants are thinking, and it's maybe a bit prideful to assume that we do. But it's just a really interesting look at elephants and just humans as well. This book will really make you hate humans. <laughs> it can be kind of graphic at points because, because she doesn't sugarcoat the horrors that they go through, um, you know, doesn't try to skim over it or anything, like she just goes full in for it. But I really really loved this book. This is like one of the few books that I've had to read for school that I actually genuinely really enjoyed. Um, maybe because it's a more contemporary piece of literature and not like something from the 17th century. <laughs> but I mean it's really beautifully written. Beautiful prose. I rated it four stars on Goodreads just because I thought it was great. I think you should read it too. <laughs> and the last book that I have read recently is one that I read for a children's literature course, uh, and that's The Paper Bag Princess by Robert Munch. Obviously I've read this before. It's a classic. Although I shouldn't say that because I thought that Robert Munch was like universally loved, but apparently he's not that big of a thing in the United States, which is weird to me. Like everyone around here loves Robert Munch and grew up reading all of his books, so it's weird to me. I can't fathom that like Americans didn't have that. Maybe they did. Maybe it was just some parts that didn't. I don't know. If you've never read a Robert Munch book before, uh, please do. His books are great, especially this one. This is like a classic. It's a fairy tale story where the princess saves the prince. If that's not enough to motivate you to read it, I don't know what it is. It's really cute. It's just a great book. I'm just glad that this exists. <laughs> and yes, I am in university and reading picture books. This is great. <laughs> and yes, I rated this 5 out of 5 stars because I loved it and it's great and everyone needs to read this, please. That is it for my first reading wrap-up of the year. Overall, pretty good so far, I think. These are a lot of books to have read in January alone, actually. I mean, I probably will be reading a lot for the school year because I'll have been reading a lot of school books and hopefully I can get some of my own reading in there too, but who knows. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and let me know what you've been reading so far this month, and so far this year. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a great January, and I hope your February's pretty great too. The winter's almost over. I'm so excited. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!